Some form of cooperative mode is almost a foregone conclusion in video games today, especially online games. There are exceptions, of course, but whether you're shooting Nazis, or shooting aliens, or exploring a sandbox RPG, or even pretending you are a dad when you are, in fact, an octopus. An ever-growing number of games come packaged with some way of playing with your friends and not just leaving your friends watching while you play, because that's kind of rude. But it wasn't always this way. Why, back in my day, the only co-op game available was Tandem Yelling Clouds. Let me take you back to the beginning, back to the time of ruffled shirts and satin pants, soft shawl, collared cardigans, tartan plaids, and the mighty bell-bottom. The year is 1978, the company is Atari, and the game is Fire Truck. One player sits down, steering wheel in hand, and controls the front tractor while the other player stands, also with steering wheel in hand, and controls the tiller. Fire Truck is considered the first ever cooperative video game, and even though it was incredibly simplistic, all racing, no actual fires put out, and it's completely black and white, it wasn't something you could play at home. Nope. Fire Truck existed on the stage where most co-op games would at least get their start through the 80s, the arcade. And the 80s arcade really is where co-op gaming begins, whether it was on the boardwalk or in a roller rink at the mall or even in a pizza parlor, quite possibly a showbiz pizza. Heck, there was a place with batting cages I went to as a kid that had games in it. The point is, if you were a kid during that decade, you probably had your place that was your arcade. Now, what might your first co-op game have been? It might have been Midway's Wizard of War, sort of a maze-style game where two players can either kill each other full points or, alternately, work together to kill the monsters and progress. It could have been Nintendo's original Mario Brothers, no super, where you knock down different critters on the butts before kicking them off the board. But the game that probably showed you the coin co-op light was 1985's Gauntlet, still one of the greatest and most intense dungeon crawlers of all time. It's probably also the source for one of the earliest video game memes. Warrior, beat food, bad hate. Which is something the game's narrator says a lot in a very deep and manly voice. But there's not just a wizard, there's also a warrior, and a valkyrie, and an elf, and all of you together can fight monsters, collect treasure, and try not to destroy the food as you delve deeper and deeper into the dungeon. Now you can, if you want, destroy the food on purpose so your friends will die. It's not very uh, cooperative of you, but fun fact, Neither is the lawsuit against Atari, which was quickly settled out of court when creator of the game Dandy said that he actually created the concept for Gauntlet. And it's worth mentioning that supposed cooperative games often carried with them the option to backhand your partner. It's usually known as a friendly fire. Think of games like Double Dragon, where two brothers work together to save the girl, but then fight to the death at the end to decide who actually gets her. Hashtag toxic masculinity. Or something like Rampage, where you could work together to destroy cities across America, or you could punch your respective giant monsters in the face and send each other careening to the concrete below. But mostly, arcade co-op, especially going into the 90s, became about the side-scrolling brawler. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the X-Men arcade game, The Simpsons had a brawler where Marge fought with a vacuum cleaner. And who could forget the ultra-violent side shooter, Narc, which parents hated because you just pull out your submachine gun and shoot drug addicts, but on the other hand, it teaches a classic United States lesson. No two drugs, kids. And while at-home consoles produced ports of a lot of these games and found success 
with their own versions of Ninja Turtles, other brawlers like Streets of Rage, role-playing games like Secret of Mana, and of course, the Konami classic that is Contra. It's really PC gaming that starts to lead the co-op way from the 90s forward. For example, after the first-person shooter juggernaut that was Wolfenstein 3D, id Software released the quintessential FPS of the 90s, 1993's Doom. And while the Doom Deathmatch could be played easily over your oldie timey modem's dial-up, Doom, Doom 2, and the first two Quake games helped popularize and normalize the idea of networking a bunch of computers together so everyone could kill demons and whatnot together. And that has remained true even to this day, especially if you're talking about massively multiplayer online role-playing games. Now, there's an epic list of games that started the MMORPG genre. Habitat dates back to 1986. There's The Realm Online, Neverwinter Nights, Meridian 59, Ultima Online. But there are two games that represent when the MMORPG addiction really took hold. EverQuest and World of Warcraft. EverQuest and World of Warcraft were pretty similar in the beginning. They're both kind of this blending of multi-user dungeon games with classic Dungeons & Dragons tabletop style also built in. But, whereas EverQuest, which is still alive technically, maxed out at about 450,000 subscribers, World of Warcraft, which is still very much alive, has the distinction of being far and away the most successful MMORPG with more than 100 million accounts having been created as of 2014 and 5.5 million active subscriptions in 2015. And it's not just the numbers, although seven expansions over the course of about as many years is pretty cool. The thing that's crazy about World of Warcraft is how it's managed to break out of the just for gamers mold, even though it's such a gamer thing. Yeah, it's about grinding. It's about maxing out a character. It's about going through raids over and over again. But then you have something like the Leroy Jenkins meme. Uh, All right, thumbs up. Ready, guys? Let's or... do this. Leroy Jenkins. Oh my God, he just ran in. Where one guy goes rogue on a raid, and that goes so viral that everyone hears about it. Leroy Jenkins doesn't need to be good at WoW to play it with a literal world of other people. And neither does, say, my uncle, who is in his 60s, but has been playing WoW for years with his friends who are also around his age. And they are playing with kids who are just getting into WoW now. An online co-op just grows from there to include every kind of game, whether you're building a world with something like Minecraft or trying to keep your kitchen in order together in something like Overcooked, or throwback pixel games like Crawl. Heck, even Jackbox games have co-op elements where you use your phones to prevent yourselves from being blown up in a game called Bomb Core. Co-op can be as passive as helping gather items for Mario and Mario Galaxy, or as intense as an asymmetrical game where a team of live players have to work together to defeat another live player who is a monster, like in Friday the 13th, the game, or Dead by Daylight. Or having four players on a couch each control the arm of an octopus who is trying to fool his family into thinking he is a human man, Dad, and not a big squid. Who knows where co-op will go next? Maybe we can have a fire truck game where you race the truck to an actual fire and all team up to, you know, put out that fire. I mean, it could be like a VR thing. It could be like a car. You know what? Maybe you should just be a firefighter. You're welcome, Atari. What was your favorite co-op game? What was your first? Let us know in the comments below. And thank you for watching.